Praise be to the Lord our God and welcome to worship here this morning, New Palestine Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. As always, it's an honor and a true blessing to be here with you in worship. If you would, please join me in a moment of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love. We gave you thanks for your calling upon our hearts. Be with us, Lord, as we gather in your spirit and we worship in your holy name and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now, a few announcements for this morning. We are continuing to provide live online worship Sunday mornings right here on YouTube. Thank you all so very much for being with us along this journey. We know it's been a wild and crazy and challenging, difficult journey. But thank you all for being here because we continue to gather in the spirit of the Lord as people of the Lord. Please have your communion elements ready for the sharing of communion towards the end of the service today and please remember that tithes and offerings can be given by mail or electronically church contact information can be found below this video in the description if you're looking for some good places to give prayer concerns list is being sent out by email prayer text group just let us know if you need to be added uh, to either of those lists to keep in touch and up to date as far as the prayer concerns of our community Find us on YouTube here, find us on Facebook and Twitter. Don't hesitate to get in contact with us uh, for anything at all. And remember our website, newpalchristianchurch.org. Remember our current YouTube schedule on Sundays. We've got worship right here, 10.30 a.m., where we share this experience together live. Mondays, Sunday Sermon comes out. Wednesdays and Fridays, NPCC Music. Wednesdays being Travis and Seth's excellent audio adventure yes we've got another release from that album for you today as our opening song and those will continue to come and those are released as their own videos on wednesdays and then fridays we have other music to share too thursdays we are having our little bible study in an airplane on a simulator the flying bible where we're traveling the journeys of jesus and we'll go on to travel journeys of other folks like paul and abraham and moses and so forth so please join us for those it's a, a fun experience to share together to see the holy land virtually at least Today is the NPCC annual congregational meeting that'll take place about 15 minutes after this service. Uh, so please uh, just hop onto that video after this worship service. You can find the link for it below this video, or you ought to also be able to find it just on our page as that time arrives. If you uh, could use those few minutes, about 15 minutes or so in between the two videos, feel free to uh, take a break, get a snack, whatever you need to do. If you would like to see other things during that time, you could see a, a, the Flying Bible, which is about a 12 minute video, or you could check out the music uh, so we've got plenty for you, uh, and if you just need a break, then come on back at 11.45 so we can see that video, and it'll premiere live so we can chat during it as well. Wellspring Love Inc. Food Pantry is still going on in Greenfield. We've got hours here in case you need to drop off or in, in need to pick up. Likewise, Kenneth Butler Memorial Soup Kitchen is still providing carry-out meals, so uh, don't hesitate to check that out for pickup times or if you have things to contribute to that important ministry and eddie haynes is still collecting aluminum cans and also steel cans uh, they just need to be clean the, it's fine if you leave the labels on them no worries thank you very much eddie for continuing this ministry and raising money for the church now if you would please rise together and join in singing our opening music god of wonders Lord of all creation 
and sky The heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy, holy The universe declares your majesty You are holy Quietly for God, O oh my soul, for my hope comes from the Lord. The Lord is my rock and deliverance, my haven. I shall not be shaken. I rely on God, my deliverance and glory. My rock of strength in God is my refuge. We trust in God at all times. We pour out our hearts before the Lord. Chapter 3, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it what I tell you. Jonah went at once to Nineveh in accordance with the Lord's command. 
Nineveh was an enormously large city, a three days walk across. Jonah started out and made his way into the city, the distance of one day's walk, and proclaimed, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and great and small alike put on sackcloth. God saw what they did, how they were turning back from their evil ways, and God renounced the punishment he had planned to bring upon them and did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Now at this time we enter into a moment of prayerful reflection. One, we uh, lift up the joy that Onita is in town and we pray for her as she'll be heading back down to Alabama. Prayers for safe travels and good health as always. We give thanks that Larry is doing better and he's gotten to go home and things have evened out for him. Please keep him and Abby in your prayers. And let's please keep praying for Barb, who has resumed her fight against cancer. Let us pray for Kelly Webb, mother of Izzy and Jack. Kelly Webb died this week. So we lift Kelly up in our prayers that she may be with the Lord for all time. And we lift all the family up in prayer in this time of grief. Let us be there for each other. And we pray for our nation, a new administration, and we pray about the unrest happening beneath the service. Let us pray for each other in the country and around the world uh, still fighting off COVID. Let us pray for those who have died and those who are continuing to die. Let us pray for those who are grieving. Let us pray for those who are walking daily in fear of this whole thing. Let us pray for those who are rejecting uh, the notion of even taking this thing seriously. Let us just pray for each other all around, because we all need these prayers. Let us pray for those who are working hard on the front lines, those who are unemployed, those who are homeless, hungry. Let us pray for those who have lost jobs and have employment insecurity right now. Let us pray for those dealing with racial injustices and any other injustices. Let us pray for um, people raising their voices uh, against injustice or against corruption or against whatever. Let us pray for each other. Let us pray for safety and let us pray for love to be spread. 
awful lot to pray for, as usual. And don't hesitate to mention in the live chat any more prayer concerns that come to mind so that we may lift those up also. Now, if you would, please join me in a moment of silent prayer. Lord God, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers as we lift up your righteous and holy name, you who truly knows best. Hear our prayers as we kneel before you in repentance, seeking to straighten out the ways in our own lives so that we may be a part of this better creation that you are building. Hear our prayers as we lift up our thanksgivings to you, all those blessings that we've received and all those that we so often overlook and don't truly appreciate. Lord, thank you most of all for your grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to save us all. Hear our prayers as we lift up to you our joys and concerns, those who are celebrating good times, those who are suffering. Be with our brothers and sisters, Lord. Be with your children who we've mentioned here in the service today, be with your children who have gone unmentioned. Be with each one as you know us all and provide as you know we need. And Lord God, hear our prayers as we ask for your guidance. Lead us forward in your grace and your love for walk in the kingdom. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn now to our children's moment with Linda Pop. Good morning, children of God. Welcome to our children's moment. What if your parents said, hey kids, drop everything you have, get in the car. Would you be scared? I certainly hope not. They're your parents. They love you, and they would not do any harm to you. Well, there were some fishermen that were fishing. That was their job. That was their livelihood. And Jesus came up to him and said, Hey, drop everything. Come with me. And they did. They didn't look back. They didn't question Jesus or anything. They trusted him. And that's what we need to do. The fishermen were catching catching people instead of fish to tell everybody about God's love. And isn't that exciting? And that's what we should do. Anytime we get a chance, we should spread God's love everywhere. Dear Lord, thank you for having a net to catch us to spread your word. You are kind. You are loving. You are giving. And every chance that we get, we will spread your word. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and have a lovely day. May God keep you safe. Thank you.
Mark, chapter 1, verse 14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord lives forever. And this is the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. You know, some good news would really be nice right now. Seems like all we hear these days is bad news. And that's not all true, of course, but it certainly feels like it. The nature of the news we find on TV and the internet, it's so sensational and the most sensational stuff is typically bad news. We see a headline or hear a few words about something crazy awful and something about it just draws us in. They even have a word for that nowadays. It's called clickbait. You see something that's going to draw you in, you click on it. And that's why it is the way it is, whether it be TV or internet, whatever we're talking about. It's about views and ratings, so they do that to get our attention. Good news just doesn't pull the kind of views and ratings like bad news does. Then we get so inundated with all the bad news that it feels like there's just no good news to be found at all. Although I guess it also depends on what kind of good news we're looking for. Or what strikes us as good news when it hits our ears who we are, what we're hoping to hear, what we're waiting to hear. To some of us, the presidential inauguration has been good news, a new president, new administration in office. To some of us, the, the people storming the Capitol was good news, taking a stand against government corruption. And to some of us, the coronavirus vaccine is good news. To some of us, that just sounds like part of an evil government plot to inject us with chips and track us and control us. Even the very concept of what sounds like good news, it's subjective, it's based on our perspectives, it's up for debate. Perhaps some guidance might be in order. We heard about Jonah earlier in this service. Do you know what? We didn't hear about that first half of his life-changing experience with the Lord. As it mentions Nineveh in what we did read, uh, if you aren't terribly familiar with Nineveh, it was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. It's a place the people of Jonah's day would have been very familiar with. The Assyrian Empire was the one that came along and wiped out the northern kingdom of Israel. And the Syrian Empire also started up against the southern kingdom of Israel. But that job of conquest wasn't done until it was taken over by the Babylonians later. The Assyrian Empire, it was known for being a very effective, a very brutal war machine. The Israelites harbored a lot of anger towards the Assyrians, even a lot of hate. Jonah was certainly among those with hard feelings. God called Jonah to go and preach in the heart of the Assyrian Empire at Nineveh. God did not approve of their brutality nor of any other evil of that empire. But God being loving, graceful, and forgiving 
God preferred the idea of saving the people of Nineveh over the idea of punishing them. So God called Jonah to go there, to go preach, to go warn the people of their own destruction if they were going to continue on that path that they were on, to give them a golden opportunity to turn around. Well, Jonah, much like many others around him in Israel, he didn't like that idea at all. That didn't sound like good news to him. This is not sound like good news for the Assyrians, not for the people of Israel. Let these people off the hook? No way. I'm not going to be a part of that. I would rather go to Tarshish. Well, Tarshish, that's the place that Jonah wanted to go instead of Nineveh. The exact location of Tarshish isn't really known today. Some people think that it was the previous location of what became Carthage, a big city across the way from Rome across the Mediterranean Sea on the northern coast of Africa. Other people point to it being in Spain. No one really knows, but it was across the water, across the Mediterranean somewhere. Now that would have been good news for Jonah. Good news that he wanted to hear. That he could go to Tarshish, go enjoy himself, rather than go to that wretched Nineveh. Therefore, that Nineveh would go down in flames for that evil that it brought upon Israel and whoever else. That would have sounded like good news to Jonah. Some vengeance brought down upon those people so he could enjoy himself. But no, that wouldn't have been good news at all. Jonah needed some guidance as to what good news actually is. Even though the people of Nineveh were different traditions, different faith, even though they had committed many acts of brutality and evil, they were still people God loved and God cared about. So when Jonah tried to go to Tarshish instead, God promptly had him swallowed by a whale to reconsider to guide him, redirect him, help him open up his mind a little bit more to see as God sees. It turns out that whale swallowing him, that was enough to guide Jonah along in a better way. Jonah did reconsider. And Jonah did go to Nineveh as God called him. Jonah offered salvation to the people there. And in response to his preaching, they repented and they were saved. They heard the good news of their opportunity to turn around and straighten up for the sake of life for all people. Hundreds of years later, a guy from Nazareth showed up around the Sea of Galilee, preaching just like Jonah. This guy named Jesus shows up proclaiming good news, a golden opportunity for people to turn around, to repent, to straighten up for the sake of life. But did that really sound like good news to those people around the Sea of Galilee? Well, we know for sure that it didn't sound like good news to everybody around there. Later on, Jesus dishes out some warnings to some people around the Sea of Galilee and those towns who rejected it. But to some people, starting with Peter and Andrew, what Jesus sounded like actually did sound better than the alternatives. They had the imposing presence of a brutal empire looming over them, much like their ancestors did. This time it was the Roman Empire. And to them, it felt like Rome was out to get them, just like Assyria and Babylon were before. It felt like their own corrupt religious leaders and politicians were out to get them. It felt like some people in their own communities were out to get them, up in arms, rebelling, just causing all the more trouble. In our own world today, it feels like lots of stuff is out to get us. If it's not the opposing politicians, then it's the billionaires, or it's the different colors or cultures or religions of people 
in the world around us, then, then if it's not that, then it's the, the COVID virus. It's bad weather. It's global warming. It's terrorists. It's opposing nations with nuclear weapons. Once we leave Earth, then it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about. It's like the whole universe is out to get us. No air to breathe, asteroids flying at us, black holes pulling us in to crush us down and be smaller than a little speck of dust. Of course, when Neil deGrasse Tyson said that, he was explaining why he had trouble believing in a beneficent God wanting the best for us. But of course, that is precisely why I believe God is so involved in our lives, because of all that dangerous stuff out there to help us live and thrive in the face of all that dangerous stuff, which may or may not really be out to get us. Maybe we just are in its path. Thinking about what sounds like good news to us. You know, I think we get so wrapped into what we think is out to get us that we end up being out to get each other. We become part of all that stuff in the universe that's out to get us. We, we, we become part of that, and then as we do, it totally makes sense for us to find bringing down trouble and vengeance and destruction upon each other is something that sounds like good news. It totally makes sense that we would confuse the whole idea of what good news really is. Well, I suppose that's all right, as long as Nineveh gets what they deserve. But Andrew and Peter heard something better that day along the seashore. They heard Jesus and they knew right away that it wasn't about vengeance raining down upon their enemies. It took them a while to work out the details, but ultimately they realized that it wasn't even about anointing a new political king as if that could ever in a million years be the fix to all of our worries. They heard Jesus share the actual good news, that the kingdom of God was nearby. Now, along with saying that the kingdom of God is nearby, there are eschatological or end times themes that go along with that. But it wasn't simply the good news of evil receiving its condemnation and being destroyed. What was so good about the good news was that the kingdom was so near to them that they were already free to live within it. Even while they were still walking on the earth as it was, they were free to live in the kingdom of God. They were free to not need to worry about what, whatever was out to get them in the entire universe. They need not worry about any suffering that they were going through, any suffering that they would experience. The kingdom was so near to them that they were free to leave the world behind them and to walk in the better ways of the kingdom, ways that begin with our own repentance and forgiveness, with the straightening out of our own lives, ways that go on to lead us to become fishers of people, to invite other people throughout this world to also be spared from the worries of this world, to be spared from the darkness that surely is in this world with a golden opportunity to walk in the light. It may depend on who we are, or what good news sounds like when it hits our ears. But in Jesus, we're something new. In Jesus, once we've heard the actual good news of God's kingdom being nearby, we know that we are already free to live within that kingdom. We don't have to be so wrapped up in our worries in this world to think that the best news would be for the people we don't like to get whatever they got coming. We are free to drop our nets and to follow Jesus in his kingdom walk. As people like Andrew and Peter, after them James and John, who were met by Jesus at the seashore, we are people of Christ. 
That's who we are. And we are no longer defined by the ways of the world. We who drop our nets and follow, we are people of light and love. Fishing for other people who might also grow to appreciate a walk in the kingdom. In the kingdom, we stand strong with each other. We stand strong for each other. Freely sharing salvation with all people. For all of us to be spared. That sensational stuff in the world throughout the universe is trying to get us. For us all, not just the ones we like. You know, even as people of Christ, even as people of light and people of love, just like the disciples, we're still going to need some guidance along the way. Perhaps that's the best news of all. Jesus will always be by our side. May we hear Jesus speak to us. May we hear the good news. May we know our freedom to drop our nets and to follow him. May we bring in many others to share in the light and the love of the Lord. Now to talk about being invited into the kingdom. Every week when we gather we find a table to which we have been invited. This is like a, a little a tangible kingdom sample, if you will, a little place to experience the kingdom together for a few minutes, as we have been called, hopefully to lead us out, continuing to walk in the ways of the kingdom throughout the world. We've been invited here by our Lord Jesus, who is with us right at our sides and sitting here with us at the table, speaking to us, speaking and showing the good news, offering the bread and the cup in remembrance of what he did for us to deliver that good news to us. Let us gather around this table as we've been invited and let us experience the kingdom. Please pray with me. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your good news. We give you thanks for your kingdom. Lord, thank you also for this table, for this opportunity to share a moment in your kingdom with our brothers and sisters. Please bless this moment we share together. Bless the elements to the nourishment of our bodies and the nourishment of our souls. And guide us, Lord, in your ways. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Well, on that fateful night when Jesus was betrayed, before heading out into the garden, Jesus was gathered with his disciples around a Passover meal in an upper room. And while they were there together eating and celebrating, Jesus, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And likewise, Jesus took the cup. After blessing it, he gave it to them saying, take, drink, all of you. For this is forgiveness poured out in my blood. When you do this, do so in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are invited to this table. Thank you.
All thanks be to God. Now at this time, you are humbly invited to give of yourselves, to proclaim your faith in Jesus Christ for the very first time. Please get in touch with us in any way so we can walk this journey with you. Or as you rededicate your faith in Jesus Christ, or as you become a member of this loving family of faith, you're also invited to give of your tithes and offerings. Remember the links below the video, uh, the website, and lots of other good places to give and share your love with the world and with people God loves. Please receive this invitation to give of yourself. Now as we rise and sing together our closing music, Better Is One Day.
uh, please remember our congregational meeting will be happening in about 15 minutes at 11.45. That's going to show, and it's going to show as a live premiere so we can get together and, and chat on it while we are meeting. Of course, it's a very different meeting style than we've ever had before. Just something that we're trying out so we can get the, uh, the, the information out there. We've uh, had some contact to get in some votes. If you haven't had a chance to get your votes or your feedback or anything, you don't want to do it in a live chat, please contact us in any other way. And remember, there's lots of stuff on our YouTube page you can check out if you want to spend that 15 minutes doing that or if you want to take a break, get a snack, whatever you need to, and come back. But please be back and join us for our congregational meeting at 11.45. Now, if you would, please pray with me. Loving God, we give you thanks again for this day. We give you thanks again for your good news and for your grace, for your love, Lord, for your mercy, for your compassion, for everything that you do and everything that you are. Lord, help us receive all the gifts that you give. Bless these gifts and help us to put them to good use in this world. And Lord, please receive and bless the gifts we give to you in return. The gifts of our tithes and our offerings, the gifts of our lives into your service in this world. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, go forward with the good news ringing in your ears. Go forward sharing the good news with all the people God loves throughout this world. Amen. Mm -hmm.